So there is going to be a bit of teaching in this series today, but uh, you came to learn, right? Everybody online, you came to learn. I hope you're excited. And um, we're going to jump into it. I'm going to start off with, I just want you to see the, the concept really quickly. So we call this idea playlist. Um, the playlist idea has to do with kind of a prevailing culture today that's going on in the world. And that today people actually, as they live, uh, if I say the word playlist, most of you guys have one of those somewhere, right? Online, YouTube, in your phone, your podcast, your music, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, whatever the case might be, you have a playlist. But if you want to possess more of the promises of God in your life, which is ultimately, don't you want everything God's got for you? There's some things about the kingdom of God that you don't, you wouldn't instinctively know, not not being born in kingdoms, how they work. Because the people think a lot of times that, you know, whatever will be, will be. God is in control. And, you know, I got saved. And so, therefore, or I came to church or I'm a good person or whatever. That that means the things of God are going to fall on me just like, just like an apple off of, a, a, you know, a ripe apple off the limb, right? But if you've been a believer long enough, you realize that is not how it works. And so you don't want to sit around and God's got things for you and you not know how to access them. But as we get into this kingdom lesson, you're going to see that, man, the idea of, of accessing what the king has is not just about favor. It's not just about name it and claim it. It's not just about, you know, uh, trying to strive for it. But actually, there is a, a way and a system and a process to it. There is a system and a process. So y'all wanting to learn that. So let's jump into it. Today, I want to talk to you, first of all, about the concept, the first concept uh, about playlists and devices. Everybody has a device. Where's my device? Everybody has a device, right? And when I said devices, you thought of this, or you thought of a tablet, or you thought of something like that, some sort of interface by which you can access and program information, right? And so these are, these are known as... Today, you'd call it a device. You know, you, you, you tell your children, put your devices away. Think of this. This term is going to come alive for you today. Put your devices away, you know, or uh, when you get on a plane, they tell you to, you know, turn your devices off, and that term has become culture. Now, I want you to write something down. This is a basic term that you need to understand, the term culture. Write it down. Culture. Culture. Let me explain what culture is first. You have to discuss culture. This is what culture is. Culture is what is accepted, what is settled, what is automatic, done without thinking, pre-programmed. I'm giving you a lot of words to give you a robust. I want you to get a, a complete, full definition. A subconscious set of programming, ideas that run automatically without conscious thought. That's your culture. Every place you go has a culture. The store has a culture that you go into. Every country, uh, uh, every country has its own culture. This is how you know the difference from one thing to another. It's culture. You have a personal culture. Your company has a culture it wants you to exhibit. And so you, you really move every day from culture to culture to culture. Your home has a culture. Different from your neighbor's home. They have a different culture. This is the way they do things there. Now, culture is not good or bad. It just is automatic programming and behaviors, ideas, concepts. Your culture determines what you think something means. So one culture may say a word and it means one thing, but another culture, just because the culture defines it, the same word means something else. That's culture. Now, when you're talking about culture, since it is an automatic assumption, and an automatic uh, programming, you don't know what your culture is because it's automatic, it's subconscious, until you focus your conscience on what is happening in the programming. You have to actually take an inventory of how I live. You have to step back from yourself, so to speak, and look at how do I live, how do I think, what am I doing, how am I defining things, what, what is my view, what is my world view. Then you can see what your culture is. But until you take a minute and step back, you can't actually see what it is. So when I'm talking about culture, the one thing I want to explain, the reason why you need that basic understanding first is that 
one accepted concept that prevents you, so one cultural aspect, one accepted concept that prevents you from and me from inheriting the kingdom. So we got all God's kingdom blessings that are available for us, but what is stopping us from inheriting those things today is the concept of playlists and devices. When I say playlist and device, you have a cultural now understanding and use of what those things are. It's automatically like there's something about it. It's already there. It's, it's been happening for so many years. Now everybody knows what those things are. It's important that we understand it. This is a human cultural phenomenon. The idea of playlists and devices that illustrates one very important fact that I want you to grab this morning. What does the, con- the cultural concept today of playlists and devices, what does it illustrate about human beings? And it's this. It's that though there is an abundance of information available to mankind, and I'm speaking both if you think of it naturally and spiritually, though God has an abundance of information for you, Though the world may have a, your job, they have tons of information they could share with you. As a parent, you have tons of information that you could share with your children. The idea of a playlist and a device is this, is that, that though there is a ton of information, you feel now culturally that I have the power to sift through all the possible options and information and customize the environment. Because I'm culturally programmed, now I automatically think that though there is a ton of ways to think about things, there is a ton of views, a ton of ideas out there, there's a ton of information, I get to customize a preferred list that I can turn on at any time and, and, and I'm talking about the phone is just a metaphor, but your mind and your heart, you can turn it on at any time and customize your environment, your internal environment. You can say, I prefer to think this way. Though there's a lot of information, I prefer to think this way. Though there's a lot of things I could be doing, I prefer to do this. And this is what now the enemy is trying to drive into us because the idea of preference and customizing things is anti-kingdom. You don't customize the kingdom. You receive it or you reject it. You believe it or you rebel, but you don't get to customize it. That's the one thing about a kingdom. Even God won't change what he already programmed. So you either like it or you don't. You either receive it or you don't. You either have it or you don't. So there's a lot of things in this concept that we have to understand because it will prevent you from having what God has for you. Let's keep going on this concept here. So the idea, so you can see now, you walk around with your devices all day long, and it gives you the feeling of empowerment. I can control my own worldview. Though there are tons of other worldviews out there, I'm going to set one up for myself. What do I think it means? To be a person. What do I think it means to be this or that or there? What do I think it means, right? So I I feel like I have the power. On my playlist, I have I have controls. Right? Information coming in, I can stop it. I can play it. I can loop it. I can repeat it. I can set it on repeat. I can set it on shuffle. I can set it on auto loop. I can just set it and forget it. I can control it. I have the levers. Of this environment. I can download the apps I want. I can delete the ones I no longer agree with. Look at the look at the controls you feel like you have, right? So I can customize a belief system for myself. And here's the dangerous part: just because you believe it, don't mean it's right. And you could be really comfortable with it. And really, and actually, you can be trapped in it and not even know that you're trapped. Because here's the other thing about a playlist. Oh, I'm going to get into this series. So good for you. Listen. The other thing about a playlist is you can share it. You can take your set of customizable preferred beliefs and ideas and share it to somebody else. Now they are taking parts from your preferences and putting it in their preferences. You may be so far away from the truth just because of the things you like to hear 
instead of the things you should hear. See, most people's uh, playlist is set up by preference. So you're, nothing in your playlist is something you don't want to hear. It's everything you like to hear. It's not going to be, most people, and I do mean most, do not have a playlist filled with offensive things. Now, truth can be ugly and hurtful and tough. And that's why most people don't want it. So most of our playlist is full of entertainment, not truth. You know what I'm saying? Because entertainment is pretty. Entertainment is flashy. Artistic behaviors, you know, charisma, and all of those different things. We prefer that over the other. How, how do professional athletes make millions of dollars? I watch my, like, uh, my children, they'll watch somebody on, on, on YouTube playing with a toy. 85 billion views. I go back to my channel, 300. I'm like, they don't prefer truth. They prefer entertainment. They prefer toys. This is cultural. And here's the thing. They think that because of the volume of the views that somehow you're going to sway kingdom law. Most people don't put truth in their playlist. Because truth, <laughs> tr 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 you know how they say truth is ugly? Like when you meet somebody the first time, that's not the truth. That's not the truth. It's dressed up. They spent a lot of time to make sure you didn't get the whole picture that day. Even on the honeymoon, still no truth. It's fun. It's exciting. You're hoping the truth ain't ugly. You get married, about two, three months in, man, get up in the morning, he's walking through the house, you're like, what was that? Who was that? The woman come walking out of the bathroom, like, hmm, is this everything I need to know? Woo, you go sit down and contemplate. Do I want to know the truth? And then you go tell them, you know what? Just lie to me. Just dress it up and lie to me. Isn't that a good example? It's a good analogy. We prefer to be lied to. Listen to me. We prefer. Do you know how I know? It's not, it's not the liars and the people who are misleading and, and misinforming you. It's the, because the Bible says to Buy the truth and sell it not to shun evil and the lies, but we don't do that. We embrace evil. We embrace humanity as, as a human people who can uh, decide what's right or wrong, and we shun God. Think of that. So I'm now pointing out the culture and how it's prevailing over your children, over yourself, and sometimes we got to realize that our preferences are keeping things from us. Now here's the issue with playlist and living your life according to what's on your own devices is this good so far yeah. now when you have a playlist this allows you to take everything that's 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 available and and can consider it an option right because because you could say well what is the truth about humanity and politics and 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 money and this and that well, okay and then everybody jumps online and, and publishes something that says, this is what we think. This is the truth. You get the preference to say, I believe he's true. And then this other person will have a conflicting idea. And this person, this person. And you, now you have to decide, out of all the information flooding my life, how do I govern what is right or wrong? And before you actually figure out what is right or wrong, you have tried a thousand things. We promise you, we guarantee you results. And if you don't get these results, we'll give you your money back. Good luck getting that money back. They're going to wear you out before you get the money back, and you'll just be like, keep it. The money ain't coming back quick. You hear me? You have to endure to get that money back. They're going to chase you in circles. They're going to allow, oh, can you just go to talk to this person? Well, you know it takes three, 
30, 90 days or so. I'm like, hold on, I bought it like that. I can't get my money back like that? No. So we think we have this, we have this idea that, you know, we have options of what is true and what is not true. And so this is the concept of having your personal device. This is your personal opinion of what is good, what is not good, what is right, what is wrong. This is just your personal opinion. And if we pass, you know, everybody's phones around in the room, I'll tell you something that's very interesting. If I let you hold my phone for a day, a couple of things would happen to you. First, you'd be stressed out. Think of this as a powerful concept. But also, you wouldn't know how to operate your life with my settings. Listen, if I grab my wife's phone, I'm stressed. I'm just putting her out there. Her menu ain't in alphabetical order. There is stuff, you know how you can swipe screens? There's stuff four screens away. And it's something she uses every day. I'm like, babe, why don't you put it on the main screen? You use it every day. Put you out there. Look, and I pick up her phone. I'm like, I, I just, I just, I'm like, I can't, I can't use this phone. I cannot use this phone. I cannot use your phone. All I wanted was the calculator. This thing is five screens away, buried under another sub menu. I'm like, baby, it's a calculator. Put it quick access. You know what I'm saying? But, you, because he, but she's like, I like it. So what can I say to that? That's her preference. Okay, look at the power of preference now. Because there is a setting in heaven. There are laws that govern how things come to you and how things leave you. God has established all of those laws. When, when, and when he established it, he did it all by himself. He didn't counsel the government. He didn't counsel your grandma. He didn't counsel you. He didn't counsel nobody. The Bible says he sat in a meeting with himself and said, this is how kings do it. He said, what do I, how do I want this thing to work? He said, you know what? I think it's just going to work just as it works in heaven. That's how it works. Now, man is, look at the struggle. Man is trying to get heaven down with his settings. And God's like, no, no, no. See, I know you don't like the way I've arranged it. But it is futile and exhausting to try to get a better life with all of the different settings the world has. And culturally, you think, I can believe this and believe this and believe this, have this worldview, have this opinion, have this, and still get God to respond to me. But I'm here to tell you, God is not a genie in a bottle to obey your every command. God don't jump up and say, what do you need today? You'd be surprised how the kingdom operates. Can I explain it to you? It's going to take me a while, but I'm going to get, whatever time I have today, I'm going to get as much out as I can, okay? Y'all getting the concept so far? So the playlist situation is very, very dangerous. Write this down about playlists. I summarized it just now, but here's a better way to say it. Mankind's personal preferences of all things in life and how they run, the values, the principles, the cultural idea, all of that, everything about your life. The issue with a personal preference is that it is the very thing that keeps heaven closed. Because see, in kingdoms, the only preference that matters is God's. That's the only preference. Legally, if God wanted to bless you, he couldn't. We call this idea of faith. This is when you have been persuaded and agree and understand something that God has also established. That We call that faith. So when you get faith, the Bible says that faith works through love and that God says you can't have anything in the kingdom without faith. So you got to have, so this is where your settings and the way you think has to change. Your preferences don't mean anything to God. You're going to have to adapt. You're going to have to acquiesce. You're going to have to let go of old things. You're going to have to have your mind renewed if you want what God has. Now, people are very comfortable with their settings. God picks up your device, your heart. And he's stressed out if God could be stressed. He's not stressed, but you get my analogy here. God's like, I cannot 
put heaven into the earth with those apps. The people are thinking wrong. The people are rebellious to me. The people think I'm some sugar daddy. The people just, they play me. They come to me when they want something. See, there's, there's what the Bible says, and then there's what you prefer it means. See, there's concepts that you've never been taught because you don't understand kingdoms. Think of this, and this is why there are levels to this thing. Because people have to help break it down for you. Like this, because you're missing so much just because you don't know. How about this one? God will never leave me nor forsake me. That's true. How do you understand that? Because I'll show you another scripture that the Bible says God will not strive with man forever. We think God will never punish. God will never push. The Bible says that God will push you out into the enemy's hands. It's a, it's a way, it's a strategy of his to let the devil tear you up and hope he's in hoping you repent. Because he knows if you sit in your comfort and your preferences, you won't. You just keep demanding like a spoiled little kid. God, you better change. You know how kids put the pressure on their parents? You better do it. You better do it. Or else, or else what? I don't know about these new parents. I don't know about that. In my house, it's, a, it's, it's authoritarianism. Dictatorship. You going to bed at this time. You going to eat this. You going to live like this. You going to believe this. You're not choosing nothing. This is right. This is wrong. How many of y'all's houses is dictatorship? Yeah. I got two claps. The rest of y'all, we're going to have a parenting class. Because your kids are the ones we dealing with right now. Let, my ki- let me see my kid on TV doing something. I'm going to be like, oh. give me the keys, babe. I'm going to get them. Because not only do I set the rules, I enforce the discipline. God's the same. Oh, we don't think God disciplines. We prefer that the Bible say one thing. We prefer it be about something else, but it's not. Do you see how that cultural human phenomenon of my playlist, that playlist is not accurate. And that's the issue. The issue is that our personal preferences cannot. They're not conducive. They don't have the capacity. They don't have the the proper Uh, ability to bring God's kingdom into bear in your life. This concept is going to get deeper. I'm going to give you some more. Y'all ready? Let me show you this. Psalms chapter 33 verse 10. A device, as I've been trying to explain this concept here, is another word for an idea or a tool to create a platform. So this is a device. This is a tool. With a device, I can create. I can create a platform, an intention, or a plan. I can put a plan on this for my life. I can put information. I can put apps. I can put, uh, you know, notes. I can record things. I can film things. And your phone allows you to create your ideas. It allows you to install programming based on whatever you think you want. Maybe whatever you think is correct. It allows you, you can even change your wallpaper. That's your preference. You can put stuff on your Facebook or not put it. That's your preference. You can access whatever websites you want with a device. Your heart is the same way. Your heart, you can put in what you need to put in. You can take out what you need to take out if you have the, now, you know, you get a new a phone or something. It takes effort to do that, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So it's the same thing with your heart. Now, you can download kingdom information. Or you can reject it. God does not control your heart. God lets you decide. Do you agree with me or not? This is what God, so he's not going to force you to be intelligent, even though he will give you his wisdom if you ask. But he won't force it. He won't force you to be rich. You can choose to be poor. He won't force you to have discipline. You can choose to be wild and rebellious. He won't force you to keep his vision. You can get your own vision. But you won't be able to do any of that without understanding there is a consequence. 
The consequence is you will not have God's kingdom life running in your life. You will not have. You will continue to join the rest of the world. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. You can join them. Many people are going that way. And in fact, in a democratic government, that's how we run things. It's called majority rule. Kingdom is minority rule. Different government, different mindset. In a kingdom government, one person speaks and it controls the entire government. In a democracy, if everybody believes it, everybody thinks it's right. So if everybody downloads it, the the app has 10 million downloads. Hey, that must be a good app, right? If everybody agreed with it, if everybody went along with it, if everybody said it was okay, we've outvoted God. Even though God said, I already said what I said. Now, if the whole church goes crazy, if the whole nation of God goes crazy, which they did many times in the Bible, and they run against God, but God always turned it around with one person that agreed with him. One person. So this is the question for yourself. Are you going to start agreeing and preferring what God prefers? Throw my scripture back up. I want to show you this. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the, de- the word there in the Hebrew where you see plans is devices. He makes the devices of the people no effect. So, yeah, they set them up. Go to the next verse. The counsel of the Lord, though, stands forever. God's preferences will not be changed. There is no way to hack the kingdom. You can't get into the, you know, the, uh, behind, the programming behind it and change anything. All the characters are permanent. All of the programming is permanent. All of the rules are permanent. All the behaviors are permanent. All the characteristics are permanent. You can't change it. It stands forever. All you can do is learn how to operate it. There are no kingdom programmers. There are only kingdom operators. That's good, ain't it? See, in our world, we can program. But that's a miseducation of your authority. Actually, the Bible says that all you're supposed to be creating on the earth is what is already found in the program of heaven. Jesus said it this way. He said, I want you to pray thy kingdom come. On the earth, just as it is in heaven. If you want to operate your life effectively, you have to know how kingdom operates. Okay? So, go to my verse. Let me finish that one real quick, and I'll move on. I have some more. I got 20 minutes. Verse 11, verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen as his own inheritance. All right, I'm going to teach a little bit for these last 20 minutes, setting this thing up. Day one is always a kind of build a foundation for the rest of the series, but can I roll now? Can I roll a little bit? All right. All right, so now, if you pick up your device and try to operate the kingdom, but it has your preferences on it, I've already told you, this will not function. This will not work. Let me show you what uh, Genesis 1, 26 through 28 basically says. God's idea of what he designed was you on the earth having dominion. If you can throw it up for me. And God said, let us make a man in our own image and likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, the earth, and everything that creeps on the face of the ground. So he created the man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Next verse. There we go. And then he made, so he made the man and gave him dominion, yes. Then he made two, two species or two, Two models of man. Both are men, but there's only two models. There's not 17, 100, 1,000, 59, 82. It's not in the, pro- I don't care what the preference is. There's only two. There's a male model man, and there's a female man. Now, you can have any preference you want. I won't debate that. But there's, if you want to be in the kingdom, and if you want to have God's life, manifesting for you, which is the only life that's going to be good, the others are going to fall apart and be destroyed, then you have to agree. Say, I have to agree. And Now, listen, you might struggle with it, but you still have to agree. There's two models. Isn't it funny God put that in chapter 1? Maybe he knew that was going to be a big problem later. So let me just let everybody know, in the because even if you don't read your Bible much, if you read the first page, you'll get to this. He said, even if they don't go deep into the program, page one, two models. 
In case y'all don't, you try to skip the rest. Two. Two models. Both in the image and likeness of God, a male and a female man. Mankind. All right. So verse 28, he blessed them and he said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the ground. Amen. So God's concept, this is a little teaching thing here. Just write it down. He designed you for dominion on earth and that God will be able to work through his device called man. This is your device with your preferences. You were loaded as God's device with his preferences. You are built for dominion. You are built to manifest the glory of God. You are built to be healthy and strong. You are designed with the programs and the intentions of God. So when you take another foreign app or idea from a human and you download it to your heart, the programs fight with each other. The Bible calls it the spirit against the flesh. Now, he said they're contrary. So you have a struggle inside of you because you have things existing in you, whether they were generational, whether they were something you did, whether they came from your current environment that are tussling with each other. And until that matter is settled, you're going to struggle. Y'all got that idea? You have dominion. You are god's device you are god's intention for how is the earth going to be ruled you're god's intention you're god's idea you're god's device you got god's program in you he put his he put his whole spirit inside of you and said now i want you to control the earth just like i control heaven in fact i'm not coming to the earth i'm not because i have sent my plans inside of a device i'm not coming God was never trying to come in person. And if you study kingdoms carefully, if kingdoms are running correctly, the king never comes. It is ran by indirect rule, not personal rule. Indirect rule means he sends a governor. The governor is the one who is responsible for the process of making sure the people have the ideas of God. Now, the only way... The only way to ruin that is if you start to silence the governor. Now, how America was formed, I'm going to give you all three words in a minute, okay? How, let me tell you this. How America was formed was we started off as 13 colonies. Every colony had a governor. The governor to us is the Holy Spirit. This is a person sent from the home country that lives in the new territory where we are expanding. All right, kingdom people, this is Kingdom 101. All right, so... The governor comes and resides. He abides with the people. His job is to make sure they become, or us, that we would become British. That no matter what our preferred languages were, no matter if we let immigrants in or not, eventually you'll go to our schools, believe what we believe, abide by our laws, and you will be British. That was the plan. Now, here's what happened, and watch this. Now, when the colonies, now you know the colonies didn't exist for two weeks. People think we were 13 colonies for six months. There were 200 or 300 plus years. Because first of all, colonization on average takes 100 years. So we were three times over in that cycle. What happens in that amount of time is the people develop personal preference. Far away from England, I'm starting to think for myself. The governor's not around. The laws are being laxed and relaxed. I think I know how to run this show. So here's what happens. The governor calls the assembly. Watch this. The governor, and listen, by the way, only the governor can call an assembly. I'm giving you kingdom laws. Watch this. Only the governor can summon or call together a royal assembly. The people can't meet. That's unlawful. Unless the governor calls, you can't meet. Write that down. That's going to hit you later on for this kingdom protocol. Unless the governor calls, the people are, it's illegal for them to meet concerning governmental matters. That's why when people get their own little groups and Bible studies and the church didn't know about it, we don't know y'all was doing that. I'm going to help churches too, just in case, because, you know, people get their own little thing going at that. I think I can do that too. 
Don't act like you ain't never seen one of them. So the governor calls the assembly. Now, the people show up. Every representative from every state shows up to this royal assembly. You're in one now. The governor has called the meeting. Now, imagine the governor calls the meeting. Now, this is a legal summons. This is not, I hope you come to my party. This is not if you got time. This is not unless you got something going on. The governor is the only one that can call an assembly. We never assemble in the name of just assembling. We have only ever assembled because God has called us to this schedule. And if God said we're going to do Sunday night, we do Sunday night. If he said we're going to start doing Wednesday, we do Wednesday. If he said I want you to meet on Tuesday and pray, we're going to come on Tuesday and pray. You hear what I'm saying? Only the governor can do it. Now imagine your life has gotten so settled in your own preferences that you no longer show up to the meeting. Heaven will get a legal notice. Because they do keep attendance. See, this is what people don't want to hear. I'm going to help you out, though. God knows church attendance. If you don't believe me, he's got several parables about being in attendance. The kingdom is like a king that threw a wedding feast for his son. He invited many guests. And some were too busy to come. I'm summarizing. They gave the report to the king. So and so and so and so and so. They weren't at church. And the king was furious can you imagine see i know there's what the bible what we prefer it say but then there's what it actually says i know what the seeker friendly pastors are telling you oh it's okay it's okay god ain't checking god sees your heart yeah he does see it and it's far that it didn't even manifest in you being at the assembly so here's what happens now watch here but there's a reason for that Now I prefer to do it on demand. I prefer to catch up on it later. I prefer to get it when I want to get it. I prefer. Now, you can listen to the podcast. We have one. But when God calls the assembly, he called it for you to be there in person. Everything else is additional. This ain't about like Burger King. You can have it your way. There's what we want it to say and prefer that it said, I wish God wasn't all up in my business all the time. I wish that pastor would take it easy a little bit, but there's what it says. And then there's what we wish it said. I'm taking it easy today. Listen to me. Listen to me. So this is how the kingdom works. So they send a governor. The job of the governor is to make you like the kingdom. It's not to take you out of the earth. The governor comes to live in your heart, this is what you call salvation, to issue you a certificate of citizenship again so you can access correct information. Not so you can leave, but so you can get your dominion back. The governor never intended to take man out of the earth, ever. He intends to make the heavens rule the earth again. Because then it will be heaven on the earth. And if it's heaven on the earth and you say, I'd, go, I'd rather go to heaven, you're in heaven. You're, you're there now. If God is omnipresent, here's another rule about the kingdom. I'm giving kingdom education. Wherever the king is or his governor or his ambassador, there the country is. The kingdom is not a geography. The whole country moves with the person. So if the Holy Spirit lives in you, you are in the kingdom. If the Holy Spirit is in this place, we are in the kingdom. If the Holy Spirit is in our city, then this city belongs to the kingdom. We are there. So people can stop wishing they could leave now. You are there. So this is a royal truth. Wherever the governor is, they consider that location the kingdom. You are a walking envoy. You are a walking embassy. You are God's presentation of heaven on the earth. Heaven is here. Now, let me finish my story here. So the colonies became so strong. I don't remember the exact number because now, you know, I'm pulling from a lot of information. A few hundred years. They became so strong, they started to develop clientitis. Clientitis is a political term when you develop a different point of view. That's a legal term. That's a real term. It's the greatest threat to all foreign missions in the world. 
When you send somebody from your country to another country that they start to act like the one they were sent to instead of representing the one that sent them. Now, 99% of all believers in the world have clientitis very badly. They built a strong colony and then one day the Holy Spirit or the governor shows up to the meeting and he says, I'm here to bring order to this meeting. Here's the agenda for today. Here's what the kingdom is saying. And then suddenly the people had a voice. And they resisted what he said. This is what happened in history. And it actually didn't happen in a day. They tussled with royal authority over them for a long time. And slowly but surely, they started to chip away at how much the kingdom controlled their life. Until it got to a point where the governor was no longer an authority, but listen to the term. He was tradition. Tradition is I am at the meeting, but I have no authority here anymore. He used to have absolute authority over the meeting. Churches don't let the Holy Ghost have absolute rule over the schedule. If I jump on the stage and change the song in the middle of the song, people are like, oh, that was my song. Well, God's done with that song. We killed that song. Oftentimes, I'll text the praise team, that song is over. We were planning to do it this week. I said, yeah, but it's over. I was in prayer and God said, kill the song. Put this one instead. I try not to do it, but if God tells, I'm not like, well, Lord, I prefer, that's my jam. I like that song. Oh, churches don't do that, people. Oh, no, you better not touch that schedule. We prefer church quiet. We prefer church hush. We prefer sermons 30 minutes. We prefer the Bible say something different. God don't care about your preferences. If you want heaven coming into the earth, you're going to have to switch over to his preferences. Think about it this way. I ain't trying to do this to you today. But what if he wanted me to preach for three hours and finish my message one day? Because I can preach three hours. I can preach all day. When I travel overseas, my starting sessions are three hours. Pastor Mike, we want you to speak in every session. You have three hours to start. I said, thank God. Thank God I got time to open this thing up. But here's what happens. So they develop a strength of their own preferences. And now they start resisting him until he has no more power. But but he is in the room. So that's how we live. We got God in the room. I don't want you to say nothing about kingdom to me, Holy Ghost. I don't want you to change my life or change my preferences. I got it the way I want it. But every once in a while, can I use your bank account? Every once in a while, can I use your health care system? I need a little kingdom benefit now. And again, I don't want to be a citizen of the country. I just want to step in illegally at times. I don't really want to change it. I don't want to become one of you. But I want some of them benefits, though. I'm helping. All right, so let me give you three words for today. I'm, okay, so I'm going I'm to whet your appetite. I got five minutes. I'm going to whet your appetite. It's going to be a little more than five minutes, but I'm going to give you these three words, okay? I said the Holy Ghost, let him have the meeting. Now, let him have it back. I know you prefer 20 minutes a day. We're not doing that. But I ain't going to keep you, un- you know, j- just to be funny, okay? I got a lot, a lot more to say, but I'll come back to it next week. I want to give you three core principles. So how, so all right, so how does, how does the kingdom Handle information. All right. So here's the way the world handles it versus the kingdom. Now, in the world, it's about your preferences, and they empower you to do so. They flood you with information. Then they give you devices to, to, in a sense, set the settings the way you like. And as long as you're happy, they can control you. All right. So they send it out. Now, this is why there's chaos, and they want chaos because chaos is good money. Chaos is, is uh, fear-based. And so they make money off of you, and they can control you. Because when you're afraid, you'll do anything. You'll take anything. You'll take any medicines. You'll do any recommendations. Whatever they say, you'll do it if you're afraid. If you're not afraid, you're going to have your control back. So the idea is to get you mad, get you afraid, get you anxious, get you worried. Right? This is anti-kingdom, okay? Now, God's is different. So, But look, here's how you're trained. You're trained. They're going to flood the airways with information. Now, have you ever seen, once they do that, There is no, we live in an instant information world. 
Have you ever thought to yourself, when you see, I remember a, a couple of years ago, um, not recently, I mean back in like 2014, I actually forget which, which upheaval it was, but there was some sort of political up, upheaval, and people were going at it, fighting each other, Facebook was going crazy, the normal stuff, you know, as soon as they want to push your button, they will. I mean, we can, we can start something right now. They, all they got to do is put it on the news, and everybody's going to lose their mind. So now, how does that happen? Because I thought to myself, I said, Lord, people don't understand kingdom protocols. In the world, they take very sensitive information and dump it on people who should never heard it. Now, now, if you think that's a little rough, all nations control information. Some have a little more freedom than others, but and some completely shut it off. But no matter what, every nation, including the kingdom, regulates sensitive information. So if your kids, do you do this at your house, or you should. So if your kid, you get the bills, the bills come in, and you see this is due, that's due, this is due, that is due. Do you go, do you go to your nine-year-old and say, we have thousands of dollars that must go out in two weeks. We're not real sure how we're going to do it. It's completely unfair that they're charging us for these bills. Even though we use the products, it's so unfair. Now, what's going to end up happening is you're going to get the kids worried. That information is not for that level. But I'm telling you how the world manipulates you. They got you thinking that you're supposed to have all of the information just like the leaders have. But what actually is supposed to happen is sensitive information in the kingdom goes through a process of clearance and protocol. The people at the top do not know what the second man knows and the third and the fourth and all the way down to the beginner. So when you get saved, God does not tell you everything. But today, in our preferences, we think we know what it says. Actually, we hope that it says that. And churches are looking like a clown show because everybody's got an opinion. Well, this is what my interpretation is. Well, it is wrong. Wrong. I've had people walk up to me and tell me stuff and they say, this is what I think it is. And in my head, I'm going, I just don't even have time to break your heart right now. Because your interpretation and ability to interpretate is not qualified yet. You can understand a little and you can graduate to more. But just because you got saved and somebody besides you got saved don't mean y'all are at the same level. It don't mean God is saying the same thing. It don't mean the Bible verse that they interpreted something is going to get be that clear to you. In fact, many times my job is to do like Jesus did with the disciples, open the scripture to you. Even though they knew the scriptures. Do you understand? These were Jewish people raised in a very strict religious manner. And Jesus came up and said, y'all don't know nothing. Let me show you. I'm going to open the scripture to you. So finally you can un- interpret it. So let me give you the three words because this is not how, this is how the world keeps you in a frenzy. They dump information over unqualified people. This is also how, now in one society, this would be very corrupt and nasty and mean because the information that you possess. So listen to, listen to our system. In a democracy, every citizen gets to vote. Think of that. Have you ever met some of your fellow citizens? Have you ever watched their decision making? Do you actually believe everybody should vote? They don't even believe that. The system don't. So, but what they do is they keep you ignorant and they give you their spin on what it is so they can steal your vote. Now, in societies of old, ancient societies, they classed people. And certain people didn't get to vote. Because they had to make people believe that these people could not vote because they won't make a good decision. Think of that. Now, on one side, that's very corrupt and evil because some people should have been voting and didn't get to. But then on the other side, do you let your children vote? Think of it. Let me challenge. Do you let them vote? Mom, I think we should live here. Hmm. Mom, I think we should watch this. You are nine. 
Listen to me. So in the kingdom, it doesn't work that way. It don't work that way. It's not. So in a democracy, as soon as you get a, as soon as you get a citizenship, you can vote. As soon as you got. Now, you've been a citizen for two months, and you are making decisions. Now, what are, you, what are the decisions based on? Not what the country is designed to be. It's what you prefer it to be. Nobody's going to teach you this. In the kingdom, watch the difference. God does not give everybody the same information. Three words. I'm going to give it to you. Hallelujah. Somebody say selection. Now, I hope you guys are with me because I'm giving you the real information, and you know it's true. There are certain people that their impact on a decision, because in a kingdom, there's no voting. There's no voting. What God said it is, it is, and it's our job to, to run it. it. We don't get to vote. So the whole idea of everybody getting a say-so is why things are a mess. Let three people come in your house and all of them decorate your living room. See what you get. Everybody shouldn't vote on that. You should just have a vision. And then you go find the furniture you wanted. And the paint color and all of that. You know this don't work. We put it in society though. You know that you know this don't work. Shouldn't there be a test? Any kind of literacy test, history test, something. Can we Now look, in the kingdom, watch this. I'm going to summarize because we're running out of time. In the kingdom, you don't get to be a leader in church unless everybody has a good reputation of you, unless you are filled with the Holy Ghost, unless you have exhibited and passed certain tests, unless you have been there a certain amount of time, proven yourself, have a household, and you're married to one wife. Listen, married to one wife, have your house under control, your finances under control, and then you can be a church leader. But some people, they just look at folks and be like, you know what? You've been here a long time and, you know, we need some help. So you're hired. And now you're going to give people that can't run their own life input on how we help other people with theirs. I got two claps because some of y'all still think we should just let everybody talk. God don't do it. This is not, now, I know that's what you wish the Bible said. But when it comes to eldership, leaders, and all those different things, there are tests. You want what God has for you? Do you want it? You got to have these three things. You are going to be tested before you get it. Selection. What was my three words? I forgot them. Confirmation. Clearance. Clearance, yeah. Clearance. All right. Confer. Y'all see, if you can't spell, you can't be the president. Confirmation. Clearance. If you can't say clearance, you can't be the president. So, you got to have these three things. Now, I'm going to just give you quick because I'm out of time now. So, let me just, so you can go home, okay? Study this. Then we're going to do some baptisms here. I want to show you what these three things are. This is the difference. This is how the kingdom governs. So all the information coming your way, you process it by your preferences, you're going to change that. That's all of that I just said is summarized in that statement. All of the information coming, it comes, and you have to now process it and go through a certain way of eliminating something and receiving something else. And these are your preferences and your customizations. But in the kingdom, it is different. So as the information comes down, God doesn't dump all of the end times revelations and all of the church business. And he don't dump it on the whole group. God brings it to people he can trust with it. So watch this. These are the three steps. The selection process. So we got selection, clearance, and confirmation. Put up Matthew 22 for me. Verse 14. So the first thing an ambassador has to go through, this is, this is the actual governmental process for becoming an ambassador. One that I won't tell you today is that before you're selected, an ambassador has to go through roughly 20 to 30 years of faithful service. That's the highest office in the foreign service, the ambassador. Okay? In a foreign land. So he, if you are in a foreign land and you are the ambassador, you are the highest ranking official in that land for your government. Now, 20 to 30 years. Not 20 to 30 days. I got saved. Let me preach. No. 
You see what we do? The Bible says don't promote beginners. But one of the celebrities gets saved, we got him on the stage telling you how to live. You ain't even been in the kingdom two days. I know you got the words. I know you got the influence. I know you got the following. But you don't know nothing, sir. I challenge you to prove to me you do know something. I promise you I can prove you don't. Selection. Now, Matthew 22 says, for many are called. What does that mean? I'll tell you. Everybody gets invited. Every one of you. You have, hey, you have a right to be at the party. You have a right to be a citizen. Everybody gets invited to the promises of God. Everybody gets invited to what God has for you. Everybody gets invited to church. Everybody gets invited to the king's throne. Everybody is invited to come and get what belongs to you. This is just an opportunity. The invite is the, it's just an opportunity. But only few are chosen out of those that are invited. What does that mean? That means out of the ones who were invited, only some showed up correctly. Out of everybody that was invited, God didn't use everybody. God used, he chose out of all the ones who showed up correctly. The ones who showed up without their preferences, the ones who showed up as God said to show up, the ones who came with the right attitude, the ones who came with the right heart, the ones who came with the right understanding, the ones who dropped their agenda, the ones who stepped in and said, I, this is, Lord, I want you to use me, not me use you. Everybody was invited. Not everybody is going to get to be used. Everybody had a life that God had for them, and not everybody will get it. Some people will die right there in their struggle, completely forfeiting everything and the necessary training and test to be moved to the next level. So you have access granted, but if you show up religious, if you show up rebellious, if you show up with another religion, all of that has to be dropped before you get chosen. You can come. That does not mean you're going to get something. Oh, my, oh are, you, are, you, are you kidding me? Pastor Mark, are you saying that people can come in invited and leave with nothing? Yes. Because God is not uh, handing out candy for free. God said, it's yours. But let's just get one thing straight first. You only get it if you agree with me. Somebody say, that's faith. You only get it by faith. Don't agree with me, it stays over there. Somebody say, selection. Now, I'm going to give you these two. I promise I'm going to go as fast as I can. Isaiah 29, verse 11. The next one is clearance. Somebody say, more access. Now, when you're talking about a government, clearance is critical. There are levels of clearance. Everybody, when they come in, does not have the same clearance. The ambassador has the most clearance. But we don't all. So there is the ambassador, the chief of mission, and all of these other people, they don't all have the same information. In fact, if you go to an embassy, there are people that work in the embassy that are foreigners, that they do a lot of the running around, they do a lot of the data entry, a lot of the answering the phone. Now, they are not even citizens of the country they work in the so in other words they are working for the government you could be working for God and not a citizen what is the difference you won't ever see when they have a meeting so if I pull together my leadership team and I say okay I need all my leadership team they come on the stage and they stand right here and now I'm getting ready to give some information if you were not a citizen or part of that or even we have a church meeting and I said now I just need all the church members to come up here right then everybody else, before I give this information, is sensitive. Everybody else got to leave. So the foreigners who work at the em they work there, they have to lead them outside the office. Because the information is sensitive information. Jesus said, and I will give you, talking to his disciples, I will give you, listen to me, listen to me. He said, I will give you the secrets. I will give you the mysteries. Church, he said to his church, he said, I will let you steward the mysteries of the kingdom. In other words, I will let you carry classified documents that the world does not know. 
I will let you operate on a dimension the world cannot understand. I will let you do things amongst them that they cannot comprehend. I will give it to you. Why? Not just because you got saved, but because when you were invited, you put the right thing on. You came in, you dropped all your other stuff, and then you got clearance. Oh, I'm talking about, let me, let me, can I finish this, y'all? I got one more. I promise you, you want this. Isaiah 29. Clearance means, now here's another term. I love teaching. Here's another term. To get clearance, they have this phrase. It's a government term, right? You have to prove, quotations, need to know. (laughs) Need to know. Lord, I want to know. Prove to me you need to know. Your feet ain't moving on the last thing I told you. You ain't did nothing with the last word I gave you. You going word to word to word to word. You ain't proved you need any more clearance. You got to prove to me you've done something with the last thing I said. In government, you have to prove need to know because information is need to know basis. And you say, well, I want to know what they know. I want to do what they're doing. Well, you don't need to know. How how many promises are you forfeiting because you haven't proved to God that you will move when he gives a command? That you won't prove to God like, you know what, Lord, I know the Bible says that I should seek first the kingdom of God and then all these things should be added. But I just don't feel like seeking today. God said, well, then you don't need to know anymore. You got enough. We got kingdom welfare. Kingdom welfare is sunlight and water. The Bible says the rain and the sun are on the just and the unjust alike. That's kingdom welfare. You get sunlight and water. Go go handle your business. But if you want secrets, if you want prosperity, if you want something bigger, if you want another key to another door for another office, you're going to have to prove that you need to know this. Otherwise, sunlight and water is what you get. Go have at it. You don't believe Jesus was separating folks? He said to his disciples, he said, he said, to you I will tell you plainly, but to them I will not. They said, why do you speak in, 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 in parable, Lord? He said, because they don't have clearance. I can't let them know. I'm hiding it from them. He said, Are you, you're hiding it? Yes, I don't want them to know. I'll give them sunlight and water. They can go farming and do whatever. They can go, go you know, till the land, get some food. But for you, I'll show you how to multiply loaves and fish. For you, I'll show you how to raise the dead. For you, I will show you. Does anybody want to know anything else up in here? See, you got to have, you got to, the Bible says you got to be hungry and thirsty and prove you want to know. God said, I can't get in your schedule. I can't get in your phone. I can't get in your life. I can't get myself edgewise up in there. I'm preaching. See, What I'm trying to explain to you is you can strive, claw, and beg, or you can just go through the process and get some clearance. People with clearance don't have to go to God and say, Lord, I'm pretty pleased with a double cheese. No, they go to the throne room boldly in their time of need. I have clearance. Let me go in here. They say, Lord, I want more information. Well, Jesus gets you in the door. But he plainly said there was going to be a difference. And levels of access. You can be a citizen and be needy. You haven't proven. All right, last one, confirmation. Somebody say confirmation. Man, this took longer than I thought. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't get no clearance to sing that song. I like it, though. In my car, I'll sing, sing, sing. (laughs) No, I ain't. Don't encourage me now. I, I learned my limit. All right, last one. Oh, let me read Isaiah 29, verse 11. All right, just I got to give you a scripture so you don't go home thinking we didn't read the Bible. The whole vision of your life has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. Somebody say sealed. Which men deliver to one who is literate, saying, read this, please. And he says, I cannot. I don't have clearance. The whole world, look at me, listen to me. The whole world is waiting for the kingdom to come. And the Bible says that it is the sons of God that must rise up. 
the first one already did his job. The Bible says in heaven, I think it's Revelations 5, the Bible said that there was the scrolls of heaven with everything written in it, but no one had the clearance to break the seal. And then Jesus stepped on the scene. He said, I'm here. I got clearance. So if Jesus has given you clearance to the kingdom, why don't you go in and get your own clearance to your own life? I am preaching much better than you are shouting today. Do you get what I'm saying? See, people, I got saved, Pastor. I got Facebook. Let me give a word today. They pull their phone out and they're telling people stuff. Who gave you clearance for this? you confusing everybody with your opinions. Hush. I listen to people. They're just embarrassing themselves on the phone. Turn it off. Embarrassing yourself and the church. Turn it off. I'm telling you, the people that, wow, well, God called me. Okay, let's go to the last one then. 1 Peter 5. I ain't got time to read all. Okay, let me just tell you what confirmation is. You can put it up, 1 Peter 5. The confirmation of someone has to be, okay, so this is now you have access to some information, but you still have to be put into your office. Confirmation means that, listen, here's what's interesting. Confirmation is a legal term in the kingdom that means, in a similar fashion, if we elect somebody as an ambassador, there has to be a Senate meeting. Depending on the department that the ambassador is going into. A Senate meeting. Did you know that the word for church is the same word for Senate in the Greek? There has to be a Senate meeting to vote and confirm the individual. Now, we can have our preference and our choice, and then we have to see who God confirms. So you can't call yourself. The Bible says, how would they believe unless someone preaches? But how can they preach lest they be? Have you ever had a demon come to you? I'll tell you the question. I had a, a guy, demon-possessed person approach me in Walmart because, you know, the, 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 the devil, he knows my name. He, he, he knows me. I terrorize him all the time. So he sends stuff after me sometimes. So this fellow walked up to me. You could, he was clearly gone. This is the question I said. I said, who sent you? He closed his mouth, and I said, get out of here. And it was like a movie. The man came up, didn't know me from Adam. Knew I was a preacher. Started telling me about what I teach and stuff is wrong. And then he said something. I said, who sent you? Who, gave, who are you under? Because who, who, has, who has signed off on you? What church you go to? Why I go to this church? And this, which one of these pastors know who you are? Oh, you, you, so you, we think the church, so this is what we think. We think the kingdom, people just run around just spewing stuff. But in the world, you got to have clearance and confirmation. But in the kingdom, you just get up and talk. I know this is tough, but in the book of Acts and in first, ten, uh, first Peter, it tells us that the older, they call it the elders. This simply means these are people in authority. A pastor can be an elder. These are people who are matured, seasoned by God. Proved and tested, they have been selected and chosen, have clearance and access, now possess the authority to confirm. And it says, let the younger, not younger in age, let the new people wait and be submissive to the elders. Not to hold you back, put a damper on your fire, or to keep you from blowing up, but to protect you. Read the story of the seven sons of Sheba. They saw what the apostles were doing. They said, oh, we can do that. The devils, they came and they said, well, first of all, Jesus we know, Paul we know, we don't know you. As soon as we confirm you, you want a title? As soon as I confirm you, you better hold on to your chair. Because he's coming. Before you write that book and publish it and declare yourself an authority, you better beware. He comes after anybody. You trying to take territory from him? Oh, you, oh, you, oh so, so you're just going to stand up and talk. Now, listen, your church is covering you. I got more to say on this, but I'm here to tell you. Biblically, they voted on who got confirmed. In a sense, we don't do it the same way anymore. We have a leadership team. We have, it's not the whole church. We have a leadership team and people like that. So it's not everybody. But, and you don't necessarily have to come and ask me for anything, clearance and all this. The point is this. You got to be a member of a church. You got to be under a word. You have to have a leader who knows you and you know them, not personally necessarily, but the team. You got to be part of this. 
or, or part of a body. And then eventually, whatever your calling is, you need somebody to confirm it. Somebody with authority to confirm it. Confirm yourself at your own peril, but be careful. The seven sons of Sheba, the demons jumped off of where they were at and ripped them to pieces and kicked them out mad. Not mad like upset, but gone in the head and naked. These things are not to be played with. Today, church, we don't know nothing about this. We get saved, we're ready to go start a church. Bible study at my house. Be careful. Can I play me something, guys? This is a serious concept. Listen, I'm going to break it down through the next couple weeks. It's important that you know this. You want things from God? There's a process. It's not to put out your fire just like you do your kids. You know, you say, listen, when you go out, guess what they carry with them? They carry your name. They carry your name. But just because we're saved... And just because we're a disciple, and that does not mean you have the same clearance and level to do things as everybody else. But God will, make no mistake, God will get you to your specific ideal environment. God will establish and confirm you. But at some point in life, the church has to become God's authority on the earth again. I know people have been hurt by churches. I know churches have gotten a bad name. I know all of that, irregardless It doesn't matter. You still have to read the Bible and know what it says. God's establishment is the church. Now, when we leave here, you go in his name, and you have a certain level of clearance. It don't mean you have none. You have a certain level. If you just got born again, probably your level of clearance is just your testimony. Don't try to establish no doctrine. Don't give no theology. You read something, don't repeat it. Just say, the Lord blessed my life. He changed my life. He saved my life. I think he could do the same for you. You should come to church with me. I tell my leaders, if you're going to go somewhere before anybody asks you to speak anywhere, you have to come to me. They know that. They're not trying to go anywhere on their own. I don't say no, and they come to me. I don't say, no, you can never do it. I want to know where you are. One, I need to pray for you. I want to stand with you. See, it's not because the devil got everybody fooled. They ain't going to let me do nothing and say nothing and be nothing. No, we don't want you to die. We don't want you to get yourself shredded. We don't want your marriage to fall apart because you try to start a ministry. He come for your marriage first too. Come for your children. Anybody know? Y'all say y'all say "Mm -hmm." y'all know what I'm talking about. You've met somebody that started a church too early. Single. Children going crazy. It's not a joke. All right, I'm finished. Lord have mercy. That this that that clock is not true. I don't think it matters anymore. You are selected. You are elected. Let's make sure we show up willing. You're going to get, you have access now. Let's keep going. This is called getting the promises of God. Put your preference away. God's going to give you more and more and more and more. Let somebody cover you. Be under authority, not just wanting authority. These are all biblical truths. The the blessing of my life is that I don't walk alone. I have people over me. I have a government over me. I don't walk out here by myself. The devil come at me. He's going to have to go through five strong other men that got my back. Other pastors that I He's going to have to go through a whole bunch of stuff. Amen. Can I bless you? Stand on your feet and lift your hands to God. Let's give him a praise. And I'll bless you and get you out of here. Hey. I know, hey, strong, strong stuff. But you know what happens? If you let the preacher preach strong, then you won't have any weeds growing in your life. The sermon is we be gone. <laughs> get, that, get that thinking out. Listen, as soon as I submitted, God started taking me around the world. It's a faster process, too. I mean, as soon as I started giving up, I said, I don't care what I know. I don't know nothing. Teach me. And man, God had me everywhere in this world. Trust me, it works. Amen. Go, hey, download the podcast. Make sure you review this. There's a lot, a lot, a lot in this. Put this on your playlist. And delete everybody. <laughs> Worldly people, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Lift your hands. Let me bless you. Father, I know today we are, man, I, 
I'm excited about church every Sunday. God, I'm excited to see the growth. I'm excited to see spiritual growth in this room. I'm excited to see people who are hungry and thirsty for the proven need to know, Lord. I need to know. I'm here to prove I need to know. You can use me, so I need to know. And so, God, I'm excited about it. And so, Lord, today I establish and declare clearance over your people to go out and be bringers to the ministry. Bring, be bringers to the kingdom. Be bringers from their job. Be culture shifters at their company, at their schools, their neighborhoods, and their jobs, Lord. I established this body to go out just as Jesus sent out the 70. God, I send us from this place with divine kingdom authority and declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper this week and that everything we set our hands to do it shall prosper and that no enemy shall be able to hinder what you are doing in our lives. If you receive that blessing today, you are cleared to go. In Jesus' name, you can meet us outside and we're going to do some baptisms if you can stay for it.